Another extremely powerful modeling technique favored by a number of Max modelers involves quite literally building a model out of nothing. This approach allows the modeler to retain complete control over the level of detail and edge flow found in the model, which means it is oftentimes a favored technique of organic and character modelers. Although it should be said, this powerful technique can of course also be quite happily used for creating lots of hard surface models as well. To take a look at how this works, let's open up the poly by poly techniques.max scene from your working files folder. Here we have a simple box primitive along with a very rough spline representation of an eye. To start our poly by poly modeling, let's select the box, come over to the modify tab and then click to enter polygon sub object mode. Now, our next move may seem a little strange, especially if you are used to using the box modeling technique, because what we want to do is use the control and A keys to select all of the polys making up our box, and then we want to hit the delete key to get rid of everything. Well, not quite everything. As you can see over in the modifier stack, according to 3ds Max, our editable poly object is still in the scene. All we've done really is delete all of the sub-object components which leaves us without a graphical mesh that can be displayed in the viewport. As we do still have access to all of the polygon modeling tools that can be used when working in editable poly sub-object mode, we can easily at this point start to construct our required model, apparently, from nothing. The first thing we want to do whilst we are in polygon sub-object mode is come up to the geometry tab on the ribbon, and enable the create command by left clicking on the button. This gives us the ability to actually create polygons manually as it were. Using the spline as a guide, we can make a start somewhere around the corner of the eye. As you can see, our first click creates a vertex in the scene with a rubber band attached to it. Further clicking will of course add more vertices. So if we click three more times, double clicking on the fourth to create the geometry, we now have a four-sided or quad polygon in the scene. You will have noticed that we laid down those vertices in a counterclockwise fashion. This was deliberate because it means that our polygon is created with its normals facing outwards or up in this case. If we had gone the other way, the poly would have been created face down in the scene and wouldn't actually be renderable in this camera view. Now we could continue in this fashion, adding polys as we go. Indeed, once we have practiced this for a while, we can start to move along pretty quickly, and it certainly wouldn't take too long for us to create the entire ring of polygons that we need in this manner. But there is an even faster way we can go about this. If we just jump into edge subobject mode, we can select this end edge, and then holding down the shift key, we can use the move tool to quickly extrude it, instantly creating a brand new polygon as we do so. One big advantage available when using this shift move technique is that we can very quickly trace out any kind of shape we want. All we need to do is switch back and forth between the move and rotate tools as I am doing whilst building up this polygon ring. We can of course even try out new ideas as we go, simply because this technique makes it quick and easy to do so. Once we get back round to the beginning of our ring, we will need to join the two ends together. To do that, we can come up to the edges panel on the ribbon and click on the target weld button. Firstly, we need to click the edge we are welding from, and then click the edge we want to weld to. Our initial edge now jumps to the second edge's location and both are firmly welded together. To clean up the polygon ring we have just created, our next step is to enter vertex subobject mode and simply move the vertices around until we have a much cleaner looking flow. This of course should be done with some care, as every piece of geometry we build from this point on will be based on the layout and flow of this initial polygon ring. To move that building process along, we next want to come into border subobject mode. Click to select the outside border of our ring, and then hit the R key to switch over to the scale tool. Again, we are going to make use of the shift key, holding it down as we click and drag to scale our selection along the X and Y axis planes. This very quickly creates an entire new ring of polygons for us that can now easily be moved into position using the move tool, helping us add a bit of shaping around the eye. In fact, let's add yet another polygon ring using the same process. 
just so we can add even more definition to the piece. Again, we can use the Move tool for positioning. A quick jump into polygon subobject mode means we can select the small inner polygon ring around the eye and add a little raised detail by shift clicking on the bevel tool in the polygon panel to bring up the cadet, and then adding a little bit to the height and bevel values. One brilliant thing about this technique is that so long as we start off with good topology in our initial set of polygons, it is easy to keep that going as we build other parts of the mesh from them. Because we started with quads, if I just press the F4 key to enable edged faces, you can see that everything we have created so far are quads, even though we did create these poly rings very quickly indeed. Making the decision as to which of the modeling techniques available in 3ds Max we will use really should come down to the question of which method lets us, as the modeler, produce the best possible results in the shortest possible time, given the type of project we are currently working on. For this reason, I would strongly recommend spending some time becoming familiar with both the box modeling and poly by poly techniques, practicing with them as much as possible. And this will make it very easy for us to quickly swap between the two, even using them interchangeably on the same model should the circumstances call for it.